this is what it's about in respect to 30 years down the line you can meet your mate you can have a beer and you can just that you can just bring so many stories and so many memories to life it's a pleasure and a privilege for me to have a little part to play in the history of Bangor City. Get hold of it. Oh, get hold of it. Right, Chris and all, he's Bangor. Welcome back to Bangor. 30 years of the League of Wales as it was in your day, now the, the Cumbria Premier. What brought you to Bangor to start with all those years ago? Crioso juice. Yeah, yeah great, to, uh, great to see you again. Great to be back in Bangor. All those years ago, I'd actually been playing for Wigan Athletic. Uh, I was halfway through an honours degree in physiotherapy. Obviously, I had a lot of injuries. I was thinking about career after football. Uh, my wife was taken seriously ill, we just had our second child and uh, going non-league allowed me to get through my degree course and look after my family. So part-time um, was an opportunity to come to Bangor. I just came as a player originally and Paul Rowlands was the manager and he left, I think it was in September time him and uh, John also went to Altrincham, took a couple of players and the, uh, the board of, of Bangor City turned around and said, can you go and be the manager? So I took over as player manager and I loved it, obviously, trying to get everybody together and... Uh, you know, we come from behind to, to win the League of Wales that first year was phenomenal and to get pre-season all organised and play in the European Cup and sign players <laughs> like yourself and get you and Magic Frank Mottram playing together uh, it was fantastic and obviously two, two European Cup campaigns and obviously in everything in life you move on. So that season, age 93-94, you've come in as a player, Rolo's left to Altrincham, you've been given a job to lose a game at Farrah Road that season. The two years we had there, but that year I think we had 27 clean sheets. I was in goals, so it helped. <laughs> here's, here's one for you, here's one for you, like this. So we played a Kronos in the European Cup at the start of the next season, right? So the morning of the game, the FIFA people were all coming around and measuring the size of the sponsors on the share. They measured the pitch, we had all the, the, the surround, um, the fences were all there, and they measured the goals. Yeah, the goal was too small. One of the goals was too small, so they had to, they had to chop off part of the post to put another bit of uh, solder yeah, some that, yeah, pipe yeah. in yeah, there and that's off, maybe he? why I, wasn't, yeah. I didn't get chipped <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't concede didn't concede that many goals that was one keep her out one end yeah. stick it in the other you know and we were a good defensive unit we scored 88 goals I think it was I think we had a record on goals scored record on clean sheets amount of consecutive games won we were a good we were a good side oh, the yeah, following yeah, year yeah. we were even better yeah. yeah so that first season you had to go on a phenomenal run you know, to win the league towards the end and, you know, that last match in, in Porto Mato, I played in that game, obviously with the opposition, but um, something like that one. I think the kick-off got delayed because um, the crowd, the crowd trying to get in, the turnstiles broke, gone, couldn't get in, it was absolutely rammed. I think the crowd was 3,000 officially. I think it was more, yeah, officially. Yeah, but I think but unofficially, more, there yeah. was a hell of a lot more. Anyway, we played. Rutt scored a great free kicker, remember, Mark Rutt to the centre-half. But that night was special. We've gone and won it and it was great celebration it just epitomized the spirit and the team and we've gone back to Bangor and we've had a proper night all the way through and then the buses took us back to, to Wirral I think some of the lads have just gone straight to work from that point about six o'clock seven o'clock in the morning we've got back and we celebrated properly as you should do when you win the league guys right, can't bring you down to Bangor and I'll bring you down this lane Farrah Road to shame now it's a, you know, it's a supermarket. Uh, sometimes I go walking down SLA Brain down the aisles, but um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some memories coming back here. Coming back for the days brought back big memories. As you said, we used to drive in here. There used to be a white wall. When I first came to sign for Bangor, actually there was a white wall, came down my wife, and we actually I stopped and jumped over the wall just to have a look at a piss because I, I, I want to have a look at it. But it was great memories. We come down here, and again, this driveway, it was like, Get your game head on now, get ready to go and play, and obviously we did great. It's a shame to see where the club had gone out of existence. Just shows how perilous football is, football clubs are, the ownership of it all. But hopefully, hopefully you never know, out of that something will grow in the future. And obviously we've got the present uh, set up, might be in the lower divisions at it, but you've got to start somewhere. And uh, again, Bangor is a big city, and hopefully one day they'll return to back in the League of Wales. Why not? Bangor City, nearly two and a half years as a manager, you must have learnt, you know, a lot on the job, you know, in non-league football to make the step up. 
Phenomenal, juice, absolutely phenomenal. I've got my notes 30 odd years ago of what we did in pre-season, uh, the first full pre-season we had, because I think that's so important to give people clear understanding of what's expected, the discipline that's required, what's your role and responsibility, individual conversations. And again, from my point of view at Bangor City, we had an unbelievable camaraderie. So again, we're, sit, we're having a cup of tea now. We'd have a good drink after a game or training or whatever. And you sit and we're talking and you knew what Frank wanted, Frank Mottram. Frank Mottram needed what you want. Harry Wiggins would know what you want. Dave Barnett would what you want. You'd know what they wanted from you. And you get to speak to each other. Yeah. Talking is brilliant and it's a lost art and just sitting having a beer with your mate and talking through things. It's the best coaching side of any. For me, when we've been successful, well, all the clubs I've been at, I've always tried to make sure we've got camaraderie. So again, Scunthorpe United, unbelievable camaraderie. Southampton, unbelievable camaraderie. That's a big fundamental part of it. You know, together everyone achieves more. Everyone's got to know the role that's as a player and as a member of staff and how we can get the best out of each other. So much time for GPO. Uh, God bless him. You know, I went to his funeral. You, you, were, you were there as well, and uh, so much respect. Obviously, he, he had Bangor City running through him. You know, and at any football club, for all the young young coaches out there, all the young managers, the relationship between the manager and the chairman is vital. You've got to have that line of communication going. You've got to speak to each other. You've got to have the honest conversation. Wim Pearson we're talking about now. For me, as, a, as, a, as an owner, he was great for me. You know, really supportive. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just nice to see his face up there. There's your camaraderie. There's your collaboration. The players, the supporters, everybody being together. Together, everyone achieves more. Kevin Langley, Dave Barnett. Sat amongst two real good senior players there. You can't beat drinking out of a cup when you've won something together. Everyone should go and do that. If you've never done it, that's what you've got to strive to go and do. And you pass it round and you go, because it's about everybody joining in. And, and ultimately, you, you look through and that's what you're fighting for. There's the first medal, right? This is what it's about in respect to 30 years down the line. You can meet your mate, you can have a beer, and you can just... That you can just bring so many stories and so many memories to life. So if you win something, the precious, and if you haven't won something, you're striving to win something, but you're only gonna do it if you've got a camaraderie and you're part of something, you have a belonging. And um, you know, it's a pleasure and a privilege for me to have a little part to play in the history of Bangor City.